Coming up today on This Is True Really News, the Flathead Beacon Police Blotter. Finally, a bit of salmon in the teeth. And uh, hey, looks if you like the Flathead Beacon Police Blotter and other weird and funny stories, uh, plus the incredible banter that goes on betwixt the hosts, we encourage you to... I'm like, the left Twix. <laughs> like and subscribe. Actually, I'd be the right Twix. He'd be the left Twix. And follow by clicking the bell icon so that you get uh, so you get known of the things that when we do them. Now, if you've got to do a thing that we know of and it's long, send it to TITR at netradio.network. I made it conciser. You did, McCombs, you idiot. This is true. Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. So the CEO of Destellaria La Vera, Pedro Carvalho, uh, Pedro Carvalho of the Mr. and Mrs. Carvalho fame. Uh, it's, a, it's a wine distillery in Liberia, Portugal. Oh, I thought it was uh, up in the Hamptons. Only on weekends. There we go. Pedro assured citizen. I'm sorry, Mr. Carvalho. I mean, he's a CEO. All right. Assured citizens that the 600,000 gallons of red wine that spilled from the facility and covered the city streets would not leave a lingering smell because it was, and I quote, good quality wine. Was this stuff like infused with sriracha or anything? I, ooh. Not as it's not quite as cool as a great molasses flood in <laughs> Boston. Yeah. The New York Times reported that one tank collapsed because of a structural failure. And because maybe, of the maybe it was the rebuilt one from Boston. <laughs> they got it cheap. Uh, please come to Boston, she said. No. <laughs> um Ever. anyway, one tank structural failure collapsed. That knocked over another tank, and there you have six hundred thousand gallons of red wine blowing over the city streets. The distillery promised to, quote, take full responsibility for the costs associated with damage, cleanup, and repair. Duh. Well, they've got Although, no choice. in this country, they find ways to get around that. Yeah, well, they'd try. Um, they also, <laughs> one basement was entirely flooded out. Partiers are still reveling. Firefighters collected some of the wine and removed it to a wastewater treatment plant. Sure they did. <laughs> They haven't been seen since, but never mind. Other that. firefighters collected wine and took it to a cheese factory. We don't know why. Is it a red? Drat, I wanted fish. Flathead Beacon Police Blotter. 8.16 a.m. Oh, finally. Yes. 70 or so dogs were barking on Haywire Gulch. 70. I'm more interested in the Haywire Gulch part. I'm more interested in how I knew there were 70. 70 I mean, or so. 901 a.m. <laughs> 901 a.m. A pit bull with a pink bandana was running all over the park with no owners in sight. Mostly because he couldn't be found barking at Haywire Gulch. Gulch. Yeah. yeah. 906 a.m. An intruder broke the window out of a wrecking business and stole a fancy muffler. Wow. Which, by the way, is how the pit bull got out and couldn't get to Haywire Gulch in time to howl. A fancy muffler. This one must come with, like, lace or something. <laughs> On a muffler. Crotchless? No. It's metal, you moron. <laughs> well, well, it's whatever. like maybe it had gold lining, <laughs> titanium tubing. 4.10 p.m. Law enforcement advised a group of adults that they could Aluminium couldn't. something. That they couldn't hit their bongs while in a public park. They what? Law enforcement advised a group of adults that they yep. couldn't hit their bongs while in a public park. No bong really? hitting in public parks. <laughs> that sucks. 5.03 p.m. They meant like take a hit off of them, not smacking each other about the head with them. Not entirely sure. This is the Flathead area. That's as true. <laughs> yeah. They have dogs howling at the gulch. 
at Haywire Gulch. Well, they go Haywire when they get there. That's why it's called Haywire Gulch. Speaking of which, 5.03 p.m., the dogs out at Haywire Gulch were barking again. At least 70, 70 or so. 5.26 p.m. How many Simmer- dogs do you suppose there are in Flathead? <laughs> well, all of them. 21. <laughs> the 11 good dogs were at home. 5.26 p.m. Several kids were riding their bikes into trash cans and knocking them over. Maybe they shouldn't be hitting their bongs either. All right. You mean hitting their bongs or hitting, <laughs> hitting their, bongs? their bongs? Well, once again, could be either it could be like, you know, jousting in the 21st <laughs> century location. 548 p.m. Someone called in to say they saw a man wearing a black jacket. They thought he looked weird. Why was he and, brown? And by the end of the evening, he's wearing brown shoes with a black jacket. That does still look weird to me. Yeah. 1120 p.m. Finally. Oh, thank God. A band of dogs. Did they just come? (laughs) (laughs) They were still there. And this time it's a band of dogs. So my guess is what they had done is formed up and decided to learn some, you know, three dog night tunes. I think it was probably like some sort of dog restaurant. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah. And the waitress has got a lot of the orders wrong. (laughs) You want some kibble? Because we got kibble. The band was on late. <laughs> what do you do? We bark. Police in, police in Wiltshire, England, were called out when a neighbor spotted a grisly scene by the side of the road. An arm and two bloody feet hanging out of a garbage bin. In the U.S., we'd call it a garbage can. Yes, it's true. According to Wiltshire Live, as officers scoured other nearby trash cans, one resident alerted them that the body parts were, in fact, fake. Look at hey, the calendar. Did anyone see that coming? Well, this was like a whole month away, dude. It was like September, early in September. Wow, really? Well, yeah. a lot of people get excited about it. It's their big Maybe holiday. Like, this was like the practice run. <laughs> you were just making sure it all worked. The rehearsal. They were fake, placed in a neighbor's bin as a prank. It is just a practical joke that got out of hand. I put them in a bag so they can't be seen now. He was told to please save it for Halloween. Out of hand. But um bum. <sighs> They'd have been horse legs. They could have said they were hoofing it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yep. If they were dog's legs, they could have put everything on pause. <clears throat> How long did how long did it take you to come up with these? Did you write them down? No, just now. No, just now. You did well. Yeah, thank just you. Now. Stupid criminal tricks. I got three of them. Belgian news agency. Be- what? That was four. No, it wasn't. Had to be. I've done two. And you've done two. I've done one. I've you done did. The- All I did was flathead beacon. It just felt like it was two because it was so damn long. Really? Yeah. If you do one, you should do three. Then how do I do end up doing? No, uh, I was, I introed. So you did the first story. Oh, that's right. I have I'm to do sorry. the closer. I was hallucinating again. Yes. So it's I, all that wine that they dump in Princeton <laughs> city streets. I'm doing the 58th story. No. Stupid. criminal. On. What? Yeah. 58. Okay. Yeah. Stupid criminal tricks. A Belgium news agency. A Belgium. Wait, is this Why? the fourth story? Yes. Okay, good. The Belgian news agency, Belgium. Sure? Yes. I've done two. I, I, this will be my, if I can get this done, it yeah. will be my second. If you can get this done. It would be amazing. The Belgian news agency, Belga, reported a man suspected of robbing. Wait a minute. The Belgian, Belgian, Belga, Belgian news agency, Belga. Uh, Hercule Poirot would be. A man suspected of robbing a jewelry store in Liege. Probably waxing his mustache. Said he couldn't have done it because he was busy breaking into a school at the same time. I think I've seen that on TV shows. Highly My tra- client couldn't have murdered them. He was robbing them. Highly trained and savvy police then arrested him for breaking into the school. Seems right. Guy walks into a convenience store, puts $20 bill on the counter and asks for change. When the clerk opened the cash drawer, the man pulled a gun and asked for all the cash in the register, which the clerk promptly provided, as he should. The guy's got a gun. Give him the money. Yep. It's not worth it. The man took the cash from the clerk and fled, leaving the $20 bill on the counter. 
Now, is there the $20 a, bill he handed? Right. And okay. is, is there is there a curious question you'd like to ask, maybe? Yeah, why would you leave the $20 bill on the counter? Well, I suppose he was thinking that the cash register would be full of more. It's a $20 bill. It's not like it's a gold bullion bar. Total amount of cash he got from the drawer? Was? $15. Oh, not even. <laughs> Ouch. <sighs> This is why this guy's a criminal and not, work, this not is, working in the this, stock market. This has got to be a, oh, I don't know. Spend $20 to make 15. That's a good idea. Right this there. could be like an American businessman who's not quite up to. Finally. Thank you. A man wanting to rob a downtown Commonwealth Bank walked into the branch and wrote, this is a stick up. Is was spelled I-Z. Stick up was spelled S-T-I-K-K-U-P. Sure. Put your money spelled M-U-N-Y, in this bag. Spelled what? L-R-Z? Yeah. What's this mean? Bag, thank you. While standing in line, he began to worry someone had seen him write the note and might call the police before he reached the teller window. So he, being a thoughtful sort of criminal, did what? Left the Commonwealth Bank and crossed the street to the ANZ Bank. As one is wont to do. After waiting a few minutes in line, he handed his note proudly to the ANZ bank teller. Did he correct any of the spelling? No. Of course not. Why would you do that? She read it, and being a wonderfully intelligent woman, which is to say, compared to this guy, she could have been any idiot off the street, yeah. surmised from his spelling errors, errors that he wasn't the brightest light in the harbor. She told him she could not accept his stick-up note. Why, pray tell, could because she not? It was written on a Commonwealth Bank deposit slip. <laughs> and that he would either have to fill out an ANZ deposit slip or go back to the Commonwealth Bank. She's good. <laughs> right? <laughs> she's just she is very good. She's my new hero. Looking somewhat defeated, the man said, okay, and left. Of course he did. He was arrested a few minutes later. Was he late for rocket scientist class? Just no, <laughs> he was waiting in line back at the Commonwealth Bank. He's an idiot. After all, no one cares. His brain is small. He's, he's not short, idiot. but he's not tall. He's a dumb, dumb guy. I don't know if dumb. <laughs> idiotic? Stupid, stupid is a bag of rocks. But <laughs> Actually, I'm know. sorry. That's a, I, now the bag I'm of rocks all community. The bag of rock. They are going to be ticked now. I'm sorry. I apologize. How about a sack of hammers? <laughs> oh, good Lord. They have a union. Oh, they'll pound us to me. Yeah. <laughs> You're trying to get hammered? <sighs> well, nailed it. This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.